<clears throat> All right, welcome back to today. Today we're going to cover chapter four. All right, which is a good chapter to cover because it comes after chapter three. All right. So yesterday we talked about the degree of ownership called an estate. And I want to make sure we rehash the fact that there are interests in those estates that aren't actually ownership, like easements. There are liens. Those are interests in an estate, but an estate comes in freehold or leasehold. Those are the only two types. And those two are separated, remember, by the time definition. One is for a determined, one is for an indetermined amount of time. People have trouble with that chapter because then we throw chapter four in, which we're, today we're going to talk about the style of ownership, how you actually take that ownership. How do you take that freehold? And you can take it in one of three ways. You either take it as a single owner, you take it in some form of co-ownership, meaning two or more, and or you could take it in the form of what we're going to talk about called a trust. A trust is a living entity that can in fact hold property. So when you take this freehold estate, you could take it in single, multiple, or in uh, a trust. So these do not conflict with each other. It is more of a style in which you take the degree. So the easiest one to understand is if you take ownership as one person, it is called severalty. Now I know the confusion here, the word several sounds like many, but it comes from the Latin base word of to sever. So you are severing yourself from the rest of the population of the world by being the only owner of that property. So when you take property as a sole individual, it is called several T. That's how it's pronounced, several T, all right? That's the easiest one to understand is that form of single ownership. <clears throat> so let's move on to the second one. And here's where confusion starts to come in. You can take it in the form of multiple owners or sometimes you hear it called concurrent ownership. Concurrent means at the same time. So you can have multiple owners owning the property at the same time in some fashion. There are two common concurrent ownerships. So let's go over here. And the first one I wanna talk about is this thing called a tenant in common. Tenant in common. You see it often advertised as what they call a tick. T-I-C, tenant in common. So it's a tick, that's the short term for it. I want you to think of a tenant in common like a pie, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. So what you have here are four owners that share tenant in common. The only unity they share, the only aspect they share, or the only concept, depending on how you want to look at it, is this thing called possession. Remember, it's one of the five sticks in the bundle of rights. The only thing they share is tenancy, hence the word tenants in common. That's the only thing they must have in common is the possession or the tenement of the property. All right. Everything else is not required to be anything shared they can own what we call disproportional shares in this example here a could own 10 percent b could own 20 c owns 30 and if i do my math right what is that 40 percent left it's d owns 40 percent 
Notice they are disproportional, meaning they are not the same amount of shares or percentage. It is called a disproportional shares. Now, it is also undividable shares. Undividable. And here's what I mean by that. A in our drawing owns 10%. He does not own 10% of the chairs. He cannot take 10% of all the chairs and go, these 10 are mine out of the 100, that's 10%, and I'm walking away with them. No, he owns 10% of every chair. It's undividable. You cannot divide out his percentage and say, well, this 10 is his, this 20 is B's, this 30 is C's. No, it's an undividable interest. So it is called an undividable, what's the word they use? Undividable interest, but it's also fractional. It's Quick an question. undividable, disproportional share, meaning they are allowed to have disproportions, but you cannot divide it out. Now, don't get tricked on the test. They can have proportional. That's not unheard of, meaning they could all have 30, 40% or 25%. It is allowed. Whereas the other one you'll notice is not allowed. So their disproportional shares are legal to have. It could be proportional still. Everybody get what I'm saying? It could be either one. They could all four own 25 or they could do it 10, 20, 30, 40, just like we, we drew. So disproportional shares are allowed. Cameron, you got a question? Yeah, so say, um, one out of the four owners uh, in the tenants in common, they get married. One, of the, like, their percentage get cut in half, and now, the, like, the spouse have a percentage as well? The wife always gets half. That's what I'm saying. No, that was... So, that was what, the wouldn't that in that case it be divided? No. If a person owns a uh, share and we're, we're going to get into tenants by the entirety if i was a member of a tenant in common and i was married my wife would share my interest in that 10 percent because she's my wife all right legally married wife yes so it would be shared because we're married she wouldn't get five percent of the voting rights i would still have all ten percent but she in theory would have a way to talk in my ear and go here's how i want to vote our ten percent <laughs> all right here's how here's what you should do and she tells me that all the time but she doesn't get divided five percent she is now just a co-owner of my interest of the ten percent because of the marriage all right. When I say it's undividable, meaning I cannot look at that building and go 10%. So I'm going to take the first 10 feet of this building and this first 10 feet is mine. The next 20 feet is yours, then 30 feet. No, I own 10% of the first foot, the second foot, the third foot, all the way to the hundred foot. I own 10% of everything and not segregating it out. If you had, what's that, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> Suppose you had ten marbles and I own ten percent of an undividable interest. I would simply go, oh, well, if I own ten percent, I'm going to own one of those ten and I'm going to take my marble and go away. That is a dividable interest. 
What I'm telling you is that is not how it works. Here's the 10 marbles I own. Let's see if I can do this. I own 10% of every marble. And you may own 20% of every marble. In this scenario, you cannot take the green marble and walk away because that's still, I, I own part of that. It's an undividable interest. We cannot split up this building. All right. So that's what I'm talking about. It is a disproportional, undividable interest. It could be proportional. That is legal in a tenant in common, but you very seldom see that. It is a disproportional share. The only thing we share in common is the tenement or the ownership or the possession of the property. Now, because of that disproportional, we all have our own title work. So my title work might say Raymond Modulin as 10% owner of the tenant in common to the property located at 12 Smith Street. Cameron, yours is going to say Cameron Olson as 20% interest owner of the tenant in common at 12 Smith Street. So we each have our own title work, which explains our percentage to the property. So we are splitting the interest in the property not the actual physical property. And that's what I'm talking about. So we all have our own title work as well. Because of that, we all can treat this property, and I'm gonna use the word like normal property. C can actually sell his share and E could come in as the new owner. He can sell it, he can give it away, he could lease it out, he could put it in his will to his children, he could donate it to his college as, uh, I don't know what that would be called when you donate money to the college as some kind of honorarium, but it can be treated like normal real estate and sell it and trade it, buy it and will it away and all that, just like you can a single family house, all right? So the only thing they share in common is the possession. That is called a tenant in common. And that should give you the clue that it's tenants in common. That is one form of concurrent ownership. 